nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. Ako po si G. Tonji. Gusto ko pong sabihin sa inyong lahat na itong buwan ng Agosto, meron po kaming Filipino Food Series. Feature namin lahat ng mga pagkain na uh, Pilipino dito sa Los Angeles. So sana po abangan nyo yan. So uh, panoorin po natin si Brandon Riley for No History, No Self featuring Filipino Food. In one of his columns in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, the lunch that launched the Republic, Celebrated historian Ambeth Ocampo describes the meal served to revolutionary leader Emilio Aguinaldo and his cabinet on September 29, 1898, the date the revolutionaries declared their independence from Spain. This sumptuous repast included appetizers like saucisson de Lyon and salmon hollandaise, entrees like cotelet de la mouton a la papilote, pomme de la terre paille, an assortment of cheeses and fruits for dessert, and of course, a bevy of wines and liqueurs that one would expect to accompany such a feast. The meal that inaugurated the first Philippine Republic, in other words, was a fancy schmancy French affair. And as far as I can tell, it didn't even include rice. So what does it mean then, that at the moment of the revolutionary's proclamation of their Filipino-ness to the world, that their bellies were filled with food few Filipinos ever ate or even heard of? What was the connection between their politics and cuisine? Could we call it a genuinely Filipino meal? Such are the tangled issues that arise when we try and sort out what Filipino food actually is. Whether dishes like pancit, which originated in continental Asia, adobo, which came from Spain via Mexico, spaghetti, which came via US colonization, despite its Italian name, are authentically Filipino. Certainly there are aspects of Filipino culture that make it distinct from others, it is, at its base, one of the many species of Southeast Asian cuisines. And broadly speaking, there are at least a couple of things that distinguish Southeast Asian foods from their Indian, Chinese, or Pacific Islander counterparts. First is the use of souring agents like tamarind for soup and curry bases. This is most evident in our dish, sinigang, as we have mentioned in a previous installment of No History, No Self. Second is the use of shellfish-based sauces. And think here of bagaong, an item without which green mangoes, pinakbet, or my favorite, kare kare, among countless other dishes, without which would be incomplete. Such sauces are used alongside the equally ubiquitous fish-based ones, such as arpatis. Now, the borders that separate these regional cuisines can, of course, be a bit fuzzy. What I've just described is in ways applicable to Korean food, which is rich in shellfish, both as a primary ingredient and as a flavoring agent, although not so much to northern Chinese or Japanese food. Many peoples in southern India eat rasam, which is not unlike sinigang or other regional sour soups, although rasam tastes less similar to Southeast Asian sour soups than they do to one another when compared. Either way, Filipino and other Southeast Asian foods are in a class all of their own, as any taste test would indicate. Compare Chinese sauces like oyster sauce, or XO sauce, a southern Chinese shellfish-based sauce, to similar ones in our home region, like our own bagaong. You'll notice something. Our sauces have a much stronger, more pungent flavor. We would, of course, say that it makes them tastier. That is a Southeast Asian difference. As the doyen of Philippine food studies, the late Doreen Fernandez, author of Tikim, essays on Philippine food and culture, among numerous other works, has noted, the better question isn't, quote, what is Filipin Filipino food, but, quote, how does food become Filipino, end quote. It isn't where food comes from, in, but instead, who consumes it? That is what makes it Filipino. So, if we look back at that fateful meal the revolutionaries ate in 1898, we will see that despite the French names, French style of preparation and presentation, it was indeed a Filipino one. Salamat sa ating professor na si Brandon Riley for No History, No Self. Abangan niya po yan dito on Kababayan Today for the month of August. We feature Filipino food around Los Angeles for our Filipino food series. Maraming salamat po sa pagnood ninyo ng Kababayan Today. Ako po si G. Tonji at magpapaalam na po.